Hello everyone, welcome to a Halo Wars 2 tutorial. Today we're going to be going over some of the more advanced movement techniques in the game. This is going to include things like queuing up movements, how to do hold position, and determining if uh, your opponents are still playing even through Fog of War. I'm also going to be going through unit groups and a few other small tips or tricks. If you want to see other Halo Wars 2 tutorials, there's a playlist uh, that I hope you check out. Um, this is going to be going over both the console gamepad, whether you're playing on PC using a gamepad or mouse and keyboard, I'm going to be going through both input types uh, for this video. So let's go ahead and start things off. The first thing we're going to be doing is queuing up movement. So what I mean by this is you want to send your troops to a particular location, let's say for example here, but you don't know exactly what path your units will take, but you also want to go through and check out this mini base as well. So what you can simply do is if you're on gamepad, you can hold right trigger and you'll see the bottom left D-pad will change to a bunch of zeros. We'll get to that later on. Uh, but then you'll you'll press X and that's where that Marine squad is going to go. And then to keep the next movement, you do the same thing. Hold the right trigger and hold the X button. And you can see when you kill up a lot of them, all the places your Marine squad is going to go to. So it'll stay that way until you either command him to go somewhere else or he'll finish all of those movements. And you can do the same thing for mouse and keyboard. It is simply holding down the shift key and then right clicking. And when you select your marine squad, you will see them do that. So that's how you do queuing up movements for your units. Next, we're going to be going over hold position. This is one of my favorite things in Halo Wars 2. Hold position is one of the most unique features, I think, for movements. And it's really underutilized from a lot of players. Uh, a few things you can use move position, uh, sorry, hold position for is, uh, let's say you want to get some line of sight, particularly maybe here. You want to see if there's going to be units uh, sitting here on this center point on sentry. You can get a little bit of a glimpse. Uh, another thing is, like, maybe you want to go bother someone's mini. Maybe, let's say, the opponent controls this mini, and you want to bother that, but you're going to be selecting all units moving, unit groups, so on and so forth, and you don't want that uh, marine squad or whatever you're choosing to move. So to do this, you simply... Well, it's, I guess it's kind of complicated. You want to hold down the right trigger, and if you have LT and LB flipped... You're going to be using the left trigger here. So for me, I do have it flipped. So I'm going to be holding the right trigger and you double tap twice on the left trigger. And you'll see a little shielded icon come up and that means it's hold position. So now when I do local units, nothing shows up. But even if I do all units, they won't show up either. Those units will hold position there until either they die or I select them and then tell them to move. And then when I do local units, they'll show up. Now, you may be confused when I said earlier, left trigger and left bumper switched. If you go in your, let's see, I think it is controller, swap LB and LT. I have this turned on. And what these buttons do is this speeds up your camera movement. And I like left trigger because, well, that's how it was in Halo Wars 1. And I have a lot of experience with that. But also, you can kind of throttle it and change your speed. And it's just a little bit more satisfying to have the left bumper be the leader wheel as well. So if you don't, let me go back and I'll go here. Let me find controller. And I'll go ahead and turn this off. That's how it is uh, by default. Oh, look at this. That's not very nice while I'm doing a tutorial. I don't appreciate that as all, uh, at all. So let's recap. Now that I have left bumper speeding up my camera movement and left trigger is my leader wheel. So then I want to hold right trigger and double tap left bumper. So if you have it, if you have your controls flipped, you're going to be using, using whichever one speeds up the camera, if that makes sense. If you're on uh, mouse and keyboard, this is so much easier to do, by the way. Just select a unit and press the H key. That's literally all you need to do. And then to, of course, get them out of hold position, you just select them and move them. Reminder, Again, all units will not select these units, and that's kind of the intention. 
It's also important to note anything that's in hold position will not gain veterancy. So one thing that I used to do is if there was like a shielded banished base, I would put um, siege within that shield and then I would hold position the siege in there so I don't accidentally move them uh, by pressing Y. Uh, but they'll never get veterancy. So just keep that in mind. Next, let's go into unit groups. And I don't think unit groups are used quite a lot. I don't use them quite a lot myself, but they can be useful. Mostly because Halo Wars 2, by and large, compared to other RTS games, has a pretty low unit cap. Uh, but let's say you want to create a group of particular marines, and then I'll say that I want uh, maybe a group of flamethrowers over here. I'll set my rally point there. What you can do on mouse, or I'm sorry, let's start with gamepad, is you select the units that you want, you're going to hold the right trigger, and you'll see on the bottom left-hand corner, the zero show up again. You're going to press on the directional button, whichever direction you want that group to be on. So I'll press up for the sake of this. So Cutter just said group one assigned. Now, those five Marines, if I press right trigger, you'll see that that are the, those same five Marines. So I'll deselect these. I'll hold right trigger. And then press up on the D-pad, and now I've selected those five Marines. So it makes it pretty easy if you have a specific amount of units that you want in a control group uh, for a particular use. Now, they still are activated by all units and local units. But, once again, there's group one. For mouse and keyboard, it's pretty standard. Just select your units and then hit control. And you can see... You have a little bit more option on mouse and keyboard. We can do all the way up to 10. I'm going to make these guys uh, group 2. So I'm going to hit control 2. So now I can press 1 on the number pad. Those are those 5 marines from earlier. Or I can hit 2 on my uh, keyboard and select those control groups. And again, they're still controlled by all units and local units. Going back to mouse and keyboard, you'll see I can hit right trigger and then right on the D-pad for these flamethrowers. Kind of cool. Finally, this last one's kind of hard to demonstrate because, uh, well, you really have to see it in a regular multiplayer video. I'll try and grab some footage and put it here as well. But you always got to keep an eye on your units. And what I see so many people do is when a beam uh, hits them, they're never really prepared. So if a beam is going to hit, you don't want to just move your entire army one direction or another. Because they'll just get beamed upon, you'll still lose everything. So what you want to do is split them up. And it's easier said than done. It takes a lot of practice. But what I usually do is kind of select just a couple, send them on one side, select another, go in another direction, and do that. I'm already at three different locations. And then once the beam's done, you can simply do local units or all units. And you have all your units right back together. Of course, there's other things that you can do to get out of a split. It kind of just depends on the situation. The last thing I'm going to showcase in this video is how to really see, one, if your opponents are playing, and two, what tech level they are and their base health, even through Fog of War. This works great on particularly their uh, starter bases um, because you automatically know where they are. Again, just a few seconds ago, I didn't even know this Exmo was here until, until I got here. It works best on main bases because that's usually where people will tech up on. It just makes the most sense. Uh, this only really works on controller, but it works on both PC and Xbox. So this is kind of where controller is a little bit OP, is you can just go to the base and just press A on it. And this will tell you it's a base structure, it's a fortress, and it's tech 3 is what that bottom number is. And then that bar at the bottom is its health. So I know that this dude's tech 3 in his base is at full, uh, full health. Going down here, I can tell you this base... It says that it is Tech 1, so he hasn't upgraded this. Uh... Actually, I'm unsure how it works with Exbos, because it looks like he's upgraded it once since it has five pads, but it still says Tech 1. Oh, he cloaked. That's not very nice. So if you ever want to see, like, hey, am I falling behind? Like, what tech level are my opponents at? You don't want to scout. You just want to know what tech level they are. You don't even need to send a scout. Just go over and tap on their base. And you'll know it does not work with mouse and keyboard you can kind of click and you you really won't know however you can hear through fog of war so if someone's constructing a base just turn your speakers up 
uh, by and large, I think that's going to really do it for this episode. I hope that you learned quite a lot here. I would say the out of all the movements in this video, the two most important ones to kind of keep in mind is to split your units and hold position. Uh, you can do a lot just by changing the dynamic, by simply annoying your opponent, by attacking mini bases, by uh, holding position somewhere, and splitting your units out of a beam or some other power that's going to be dropped on you uh, when you're playing online. Again, there is another playlist of tons of Halo Wars 2 tutorials, so please do check that out. And join our Discord server. We have uh, tons of Halo Wars players in there. Over almost 5,000 Halo Wars players in our Discord server if you want to chat with those ladies and gentlemen. That does it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you, James. <laughs>